Greetings, Java students. I want to show you how to take a simple program like this with a single ball object that just moves and wraps around the screen and use arrays to create 100 ball objects that all have their own independent behavior. We'll be using this same approach to create bullets in our games to come and a lot of other things as well. First, we'll talk about the theory, then I'll show you how to do it in code. If this is our screen, you got to remember, the only thing the computer can see are the numbers that are inside the variables. So we have two variables, x and y, and let's pretend they each start out holding the numbers 200. In the draw loop, I'm only really doing three things. Um, and I'm going to trace what happens step by step as if I'm the computer so that you can see. I look at the x value, which is 200. I add 4 to it and I store it back inside the x value. So this now becomes 204. I haven't changed anything on the screen yet. I haven't actually told the computer to draw anything. I'm just changing the number inside the variable. Next, I check to see, is that number larger than 600? The answer is no. Now, finally, I tell it to draw an ellipse at whatever numbers are inside these variables. So I look in the variables. I see 204 and 200. So I draw the ellipse. And that makes the circle move over a tiny bit. If I repeat the draw loop from the top, I do all of that again. I increase the x coordinate by 4. So now this is 208. I check if it's bigger than 600, but it isn't. So now I draw an ellipse at 208, 200. And so that moves the ball over a little bit again. This is an idea you're familiar with. That's how the process happens. If we want to create lots of objects that move, we're going to need something like this. We want to do the same steps, only instead of a single xy variable, we want a whole list of xy variables. I'm using color coding to help you see the difference here. Element 0 of each of these lists is going to give us the x and the y coordinate for the first ball that we want to draw. The next numbers in the list will give us the x and y coordinate for the next ball we want to draw, and so on. So the number of x coordinates we have in our whole list and the number of y coordinates is going to determine how many objects we're going to draw on the screen. We want to do the exact same steps as last time, only this time we need to do each of those steps to every single one of these coordinates. Before, we just had to change the only x coordinate there was by 4. Now, if we want all the objects to move, I've got to change this by 4, and then I've got to change that by 4, and then I've got to change that by 4 to tell each of the balls to move over. All right, so inside the draw loop, it's going to have the exact same steps, only I'm going to need to have a loop which takes us through every single spot in the array one at a time. We'll see what that looks like in code in just a second. But it's going to be something that uses i as an integer variable. And i is going to start out at 0, and it's going to go up by 1 every time. So let's pretend i is 0 right now. If you remember the notation that you just learned, x0 is referring to whatever number is in location 0. So I'm taking the number in location 0, I'm adding 4, I'm storing it back into location 0. So this 10 becomes 14. All right, now I check to see if the number in location 0 is bigger than 600. It's not. So now I tell it to draw an ellipse at the number in location 0 for x and the number in location 0 for y. That's going to be 14, 10. So it's going to draw this one, scoot it over just a little bit. But I'm not done with the draw loop because now I'm going to loop back up here, and i is going to go up by 1. So now i is going to point at the coordinate for the second ball. So now that i is 1, I'm going to say, take the x coordinate in location 1 and add 4 and save it back in the list. So 210 becomes 214. I check if that number is bigger than 600. It is not. So I draw an ellipse at 214, 210. So it takes these two numbers and draws an ellipse there, which is going to make it look like this one moved over a little bit. Last time through, well, this list keeps going, but I'm just going to do it for the third example I have here. So when i is pointing to 2 now, I'm going to get the element out of location 2, add 4, and save it. So I'm getting this number out. I'm adding 4, and I'm saving it. So now this is 314. 
I'm going to check if it's off the screen, and then I'm going to draw an ellipse there. So that makes this one move over a little bit. I do that for every single coordinate in the array, and that's going to do the exact same three steps of moving it, checking it, drawing it for every single pair of coordinates. And that's going to make every single ball object move independently. And I'm doing that every single frame of the animation that happens. So the next time I go through, I'm going to go through the whole list again. And I'll start by changing this one to 18. And then I'll check, and then I'll draw it. I'll change this to 218. I'll check if it's off the screen, and I'll draw it. I'll, ch I'll change this one to 318. I'll check if it's off the screen. I'll draw it, and so on. So as you see, as the draw loop continues, every ball object, I'll move it, draw it, move it, draw it, move it, draw it, and so on. OK, let's try it using code. Here I am back in my program. So I want to recreate each of these lines using a whole list of values rather than single variables. So I'm going to comment this out. And instead of having an x and a y that are integers, I'm going to have an array of x values. And I think I'm going to put 20 x values in there. And I'll have an array of y values. And I'll also have 20. So now I've created my variables. I'm going to delete that because we're not using it anymore. All right. Now that I've created the variables, I have to give them starting values. That's where I want all of the ball objects to start displaying. So I could do this. I could say x0 gets 300, y0 gets 300, x1 gets 400, y1 gets 400. This is already very tiring, and I still have 18 sets of variables to go through. So instead of doing that, you can use a loop like we learned how to do in class. So I will start at 0. I'm going to go all the way up to 20 because, nine, oh well, I want to keep going as long as i is smaller than 20 because 19 is the largest location number that I can write into in this list. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to make random coordinates. So I'm making a random number between 0 and 599. And I'm going to copy that same line for the y coordinate. So this is going to loop 20 times. The first time through the loop, I'm going to be storing my random number into x0, y0, which are the first boxes in the list. And then the next time through the loop, when i is 1, I'll be storing into x1, y1. So this is going to write numbers into all of the elements of both lists. All right, let's replace these now. If you remember from my picture before, I want a loop that will loop through every single box in the whole array. So I'm going to do the same thing as just a second ago. And the reason I'm putting my closing brace down here is because I want each of these three lines of code to happen for every single ball object. And this is looping through all of the locations in the array. And each location is a different ball. So I want this to happen for each new location. I, it doesn't like x anymore because there isn't a single x. There's a whole bunch of x coordinates. So I have to tell it which x coordinate am I trying to make bigger by 4. I want it to happen to every single x coordinate one at a time. Because i starts at 0 and goes up by 1, if I do this, now the first time through the loop, I'm saying take the first x coordinate, add 4, and store it back here. Then when i goes up, I'll say take the next x coordinate and add 4 and store it back. So this is going through the whole loop and changing every single x coordinate in the whole list. A similar thing is going to happen for all of the other things in this list. I'm going to change this to update for every single x coordinate. I'm going to change these to update for every single coordinate. So now I'm checking x positions. I'm checking if it's off the screen. And I'm drawing it. But I'm doing it 20 times per draw, because there are 20 ball objects that I need to do for every single step. All right, put it all together, and I run it. And I've got 20 independent objects. It's very easy to make this larger. If I make this 200 and 200, 
And now I loop 200 times because my list is now 200 long. And I list uh, and I loop this 200 times. I've suddenly made 200 objects instead of 20. And it works because really I have the same five lines of code, these two and these three, that I'm doing for all of the objects. So the only thing that really needs to change is I need to tell it how many objects does it need to do these for. Um, an even nicer thing that you could do is up at the top, you could make a variable called um, called number of objects. And let's make that 100. And now you can use that variable in all of the places. So now you see there's 100. But now if I want there to just be 10, I just change number of objects. And now there's just 10. So changing a single number will make the whole program change. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to do a lot more with this in the coming weeks.